You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, ProLeftPod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for January 5th, 2018. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and Fury book club. Spoilers, lots of stuff ahead. It's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. I came up with a uh, scary plotter. <laughs> scary plotter and the Goblet of Fire and Fury. But well, yeah. I, I have another book club down at the, uh, where the Internet Kitties are going to be doing Oh. Over the next week. So, you know, just a little, again, teasers, spoilers, plenty of spoilers. <laughs> We're going to ruin the whole plot of uh, the Goblet of Fire and Fury. Um, it's going to be big. Uh, it's going to be excellent. Uh, and it's happening in real time, which is really weird. I mean, I know that uh, J.K. Rowling's wrote the Goblet of Fire, but really, I think we can all agree at this point. Philip Dick and Kurt Vonnegut are in heaven. Yes. They are writing this shit. They are because it's just you know. It, I just want to remind people before we move on to our new sponsor because we do have a new sponsor. Uh huh. Um, it was one week ago that uh, I believe Mike Schmidt's thirty-minute interview with mm-hmm. Donald Trump mm-hmm. just brought the house down. Yeah, right. Oh my god! I know. I, I was talking with someone shit? about that this morning and forgetting what what the bombshell was. Yeah, is that he yeah. rambled around and talked well, and shit. Well, and the White House didn't know where he was or that right. he was conducting an interview or that any any pro- there had been no preparation for this interview. It was just, yeah, yeah, right. go ahead, record me, whatever. Yeah. And it's just clear, as you have told me many times since this book situation arose, uh-huh. uh, the fact that it confirms everything you know about Donald Trump and this White House uh, – means that if some of the details aren't quite true, it doesn't sure. matter. I mean, and I don't mean truth doesn't matter or that, you know, making sure that what we say is true matters. Yeah. The, the, the point is not the content of the book. The point is the impact it has had on this president, the drama that has gone on where he's trying to stop publication of the book. Yes. The First is, Amendment. He's making so many Amendment. stupid. He's making so many stupid mistakes. Right. In in the course of. And and things where he should know better. He should know enough about uh, no. promoting things, and that you don't try to ban something that just makes people want it more. You know, basic. Well, we'll get into that. Yeah. Because uh, I, part of the problem is that he really has I- internalized, as have sixty million other meatheads in this country, internalized the Fox News Breitbart. Yeah belief in how government actually secretly works. Well, and yeah, let's get into all that. But first, let's yeah. go to our new sponsor, Drift Glass. Yes, indeed. We have a new sponsor this week, uh, John Birchbox. It's not Birchbox. <laughs> it's John Birchbox. Uh, because after the Republican base goes full tilt Tea Party Part 2 and trashes all their MAGA crap and pretends they've never heard of Donald Trump and President Stupid and that shit is, that shit is going to become extraordinarily collectible. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. So we've got MAGA hats, Hideous presidential coins, fake Time magazine covers, Steve Bannon bobblehead dolls. They have it all. So let John Birchbox send a curated crate of the crap gathering dust in your crazy uncle's rec room today. <laughs> Including Trumpy Bear. Have you heard about yeah. Trumpy Bear? Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't. Trumpy Bear, uh, Trumpy Bear is assume. a real thing. It is a teddy bear with Donald Trump's hair. I am not making this up. This is a real thing in the world. Sure. And a zipper. Uh pouch in the back into which is stuffed <laughs> an american Bannon's. flag oh okay stuffed, I thought not Bannon's. folded into a triangle not not treated with the respect that you know no. the that the foreign legion and all of those uh boy scouts and everyone tell you the flag code tells you how to treat an american flag this american flag is blanket is a blanket that is stuffed into the back of the neck of this trump quaffed teddy bear and they are selling it for two payments of 1995 sure and it's a real thing in the world so see when, when you said there's a zippered opening in the rear of the bear yeah i know really it's just coming it was, right out of his butt but it's not. i assumed it was vlad the impaler that's where you that's where vlad puts his you know impaler uh yep. because let's face it uh president stupid's going down right right uh, and well and I, we're, we're now going way into several different Let's let's try to drain it all in because we're gonna do this live with no editing day. We are so so busy, guys. We've got kids at home. We've got kids leaving for college, kids going back and forth. 
you've got day job work to do. I do. Suddenly, I, I have, have a lot of day job work. Liar to stuff to do. So, so um, it's it's let's we're, we'll get back to our notes and we're going to follow these notes. Yes. <laughs> Try well, uh, to. Uh, as a frame for our discussion, I have uh, titled this this podcast "Glasnost Hold the Perestroika," because if you're of a certain age. You remember when Mikhail Gorbachev was going to save the Soviet Union with a one-two punch of glasnost, which mm-hmm. means openness, and perestroika, which means restructuring or reform or just fixing the system. Mm-hmm. And it turns out once the glasnost got going and people were allowed finally to talk about how much they hated their fucking government and how, how miserable their lives were, uh, it was clear there was no way, no way the hardcore party bosses were ever going to let that much reform happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At the same yeah. time, it was absolutely clear that no amount of little tweaking around the edges, little prayer strike of tweaks, were going to fix the Soviet system at all. So the whole system collapsed because you let people express their deep, deep anger at how badly the system was fucked up. And then basically told them that we're going to make tiny little changes around the edges, but the hardcore party bosses ain't going anywhere. Right. That right. is what's happened to the Republican Party Absolutely. in real time right now as you watch. Well, and, and someone told a very funny, uh, clean joke on Twitter today uh, relating the Michael Wolff book to uh, the Soviet Union, which – and the joke goes like this. Uh, a dissident – is in Red Square shouting, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev is an idiot. Mikhail Gorbachev is an idiot. And he's arrested and he's given 10 years. One year for insulting the leader of the Rus- of the Soviet Union and nine years for revealing a state secret. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yep. So, uh, you know, this that that's sort of what I was saying earlier, which is this doesn't come to a, as a surprise to anyone outside the Fox News bubble that no. Donald Trump didn't want to win, that uh, his daughter's an idiot, that his marriage is horrible, uh, that he treats women and his staff like shit, that uh, he's a child who, who won't read anything, who gets bored and walks away, and that everyone on staff at the White House knows he's an idiot. Right. Uh, none of that comes as a surprise to any of us. No. Uh, the the story here, as you said, Drift Glass, is number one, his reaction to it. Right. And number two, what this does in terms of how the mainstream media covers this White House. I think right. that's a big deal. Well, um, and, and you can hearken it back a little bit because the word I would use is verisimilitude. Mm-hmm. You know, how close does it sound like reality? Yeah. That's what yeah. that's what you strive for in fiction. You, you strive for it to be real enough for people to feel and get invested in. Chevy Chase was never Jerry Ford. Yeah, right. But he, te- he, he echoed and emulated what Gerald Ford was projecting so accurately that it became part of the narrative. It didn't mm-hmm. matter that he was not Gerald Ford falling off a Christmas tree or petting a dead dog. It was, oh, it's that buffoon. Mm-hmm. And the story of Donald Trump has now is now over. I mean, it'll play out, but who he is is locked into place for everyone involved. There's no really going back. You have a hardcore group of 30 to 35 percent of America who are, as I've said a million times, reprogrammable Republican meatbags mm-hmm. who are never going to leave him, are down in the bunker with him, who, who believe everything is going to work out somehow and that some new Hillary Clinton thing is going to fix it. But um, who he is and who you have to be to follow him. What sort of what sort of amoral scuttlefish you have to be to follow along behind this guy is set in stone now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, now, do you want to start with a little a discussion on conservative evangelicals and their rebranding effort? Or do well, you want to I want to talk. Bit? I want to stick with uh, this for a moment, um, just to also bring up the Matthew Gertz piece from this morning. Yes, yes, yes. Called yes. "Crazier Than You Think," uh, or that's that's how it comes out on Twitter. When it was, when it was, you know, trending on Twitter, uh-huh. uh, the the Trump White House Fox News back and forth is crazier than you think because it's not that Donald Trump is tweeting policies in any kind of a rational way that Twitter is somehow the driver. Fox News producers are the driver. Now again, this is something that no one listening to this podcast will find surprising. Right. But Donald Trump is watching Fox and Friends and then just tweeting what he hears right. and being outraged just like Crazy Uncle Liberty, because that's who he is. Yes. Uh, and so um, the fact that uh, Sean Hannity is 
going on and on and on about Hillary Foundation, Hillary Clinton lock her up stuff yeah. is in part, yes, Jeff Sessions is doing a probe now to give Sean Hannity something to say. Exactly. And he's then a, he's, Sean he's Hannity a... says it and Trump hears it and tweets about it. And that's the news cycle. It, it Jeff so, Sessions is a content provider exactly. for Fox News. Exactly. That's all he is at this yep, point. At this point, that, that's his job. And, and to have the leader of the judiciary in the United States be a just merely a content provider for Fox is really horrible. Um, but one th- point I made in my post at Crooks and Liars today is that, yes, there is a feedback loop with Fox News and Trump. Mm-hmm. There is just as much of a feedback loop with the mainstream media and Politico and Axios. Yes, there are is. Corporate, <laughs> mm-hmm. which are, um, I would argue, right wing from the standpoint of being uh, defenders of big oil and big business uh, and be, and totally sponsored by those things. And yes, they can have uh, breaking news and have things worth reporting because they have so much access in DC because they're part of that well-funded world of mainstream, you know, being able to talk to any congressman, being able to talk, get leaks, being able to do whatever. But there's a feedback loop there, and make no mistake, there's a feedback loop. And and it's equally Um, important. mm -hmm. One cannot exist without the other. Right. Uh, If you'd like to read uh, Blue Gal's amazing post on this story, uh, it's worse than you you could possibly imagine. I urge you to do so. If you want to read um, pretty much the same story from 2006, (laughs) go back and read uh, something I wrote, I believe, called Reactionary about Mm -hmm. the pretty hate machine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the same. It's, I mean, this this is the this is the thing that James Fallows talks about. I'm, I'm going to yeah. talk about that yeah. for a second, if you don't mind. No, go right ahead. Um, James Fallows in in the Atlantic today uh, talked about uh, in almost the same terms that you and I have been talking about for quite a while, ever since Harvey Weinstein is certainly um, has been the permission structure that allows monsters to operate openly, uh, and everyone around them just looks the other way, just pretends it's not happening. And that once something happens to crack open the system, everyone says, well, everyone knew about that. It's an open secret. Every, yeah, you know, all, yeah. all the insiders knew. Yeah. Us poor dumbasses out here in flyover country, you never told us this shit. Now, we figured exactly. it out because we're not stupid. But he points out that, yeah, the Harvey Weinstein, et cetera, et cetera, Bill Cosby, et cetera, et cetera, thing was all uh, – everyone said, well, everyone knows you don't take a meeting with Harvey Weinstein in his mm-hmm. hotel room. Everyone knows. Well, no. Fuck you. We didn't know because you didn't tell us because you're not journalists. You are part of the problem. But he points out that the fact that Donald Trump is a buffoon and mentally ill and racist and insane uh, has been an open secret. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows about it. Mm-hmm. And and he's, and he says – Exactly what we've been saying here, which is the scandal with Michael Wolff's new book isn't the detail. It's that everyone in Washington has known its themes and refused to act. Right. Everybody right. knew. Right. And this is what we said last week. I think it was about Vernon Johns's sermon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, Christ forgave the, his crucifiers because they didn't know what they were doing. Right. The people who built the Republican Party and gave us Donald Trump, who birthed this monster, knew what they were doing. Yep. Yep. knew what they were doing, and there's no forgiveness for these people. I, well, I, I, and, and this is something Rob Reiner said the same thing. He said uh, the fact that uh, McConnell and Ryan refused to do anything about this is uh, is criminal. Now, then there was a reply that, well, uh, you know, Donald Trump is giving them exactly what they want, which is uh, appointed for life, approved for life, judicial right. nominees. Yes. And isn't it interesting that the one place where Donald Trump is obeying the Heritage Foundation is in judicial appointments, for the most part. The crazy ones that are not part of the, you know, anyone that Donald Trump appoints from the lit, the approved list mm. from the Heritage Foundation or from right wing uh, billionaires is going to sail through the Senate. It's when yep. Donald Trump goes off that reservation and tries to pay back, you know, some staffer's husband who's got a right wing blog or something that the Senate actually stands up to Trump and rejects those candidates. Right. Uh, but when when he puts Gorsuch, you know, they're still bragging about Gorsuch when yeah. he is sitting in a stolen seat. Yeah. And uh, you did say something about Lawrence uh, talking it just <laughs> last fucking night. appalled. You know, the, the normally very reasonable, very watchable, very affable Lawrence O'Donnell, mm-hmm. uh, who at the end of the day is a Comcast employee. 
Yeah, he has to be. Um, yeah, got it. Sat there with the odious, awful George Will, yeah. who was hired because we have affirmative action for wing nuts on MSNBC. So that's why Joan Walsh had to go. Yeah. So that we right. can keep Q Hewitt. You know, this is this is this is who you're watching. The, the, it is compromised right down to the bone. Uh, I like a lot of the people on that network. I like what they talk about when they talk about when they can talk about truthfully. But it's clear that there are certain no go zones that their corporate overlords tell them you can't talk about this shit and mm -hmm. here's one thing you're going to have tonight lawrence you're going to have you're going you're gonna to sit and yuck it up with george will and not talk about any of the shit he's ever done right and right. george will gets on there and he and lawrence laugh it up about the fact that mitch mcconnell's playing a long game you know why mitch mcconnell's playing a long game because he has a deep reverence for the institution of the Senate. Right, right. And I just said, oh, well, now you're going to bring up uh, Merrick Garland, right? Right. No, of course not, because that would be embarrassing. Yeah. And and yeah. and and, and Lord, what Lord Donald is obviously under instruction. You can slap the shit out of Joe Walsh when he's on your show because mm -hmm. he's not mm -hmm. on the fucking payroll. But when George Will rolls up in here or Peggy Noonan rolls up in here, she's a fellow employee. And when they take a giant dump on your desk, you're supposed to smile and say, yes, sir. That's right. That 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 uh, that Mitch McConnell. He's well known for his reverence for the institution of the Senate, and that's why he acted the way he did. Well, fuck you. That you know that's not true. Lawrence and all um, above everyone else, because he worked in the Senate. Mm -hmm. Goddamn well knows that's not true, and he let that lie fly. And because he's normally very honest, the question then becomes: Why was it okay for George Will to lie in your face, Lawrence? And the answer has to be. Because my paycheck comes from the same guy who gives George Will his paycheck. Yep, yep. And I ain't going to bite the hand that feeds me. I'm doing too yep. much. I'm doing my kind fund. I'm raising money for kids with desks, desks for kids, which is great. I'm doing all this other good shit. And occasionally I have to take a big bite of a shit sandwich because my boss is an asshole. <laughs> and my boss lets Hugh Hewitt come on Drift Glasses TV this afternoon. And brag about the the uh, the fact that we're going to open up all the oceans for drilling now. Yeah, yeah. And that's a great thing. And this this dead eyed <laughs> cyborg sent from the future to destroy America <laughs> just, just stared in the camera and talked about how fucking awesome it is that America was blessed by time and circumstance with all these resources, and now finally we're going to get to use them. And well, they're fossil fuels. And it's like hell yeah, they're fossil fuels. That's great. And that asshole would be living under a bridge. Begging yeah. change from people if it weren't for the fact that he was a right wing radio scumbag who knows somebody is, and is sucking somebody's dick at Comcast. So one day he became Chuck Todd's best friend. Right. One day Chuck Todd showed up and there's this ghostly white dead eyed monster sitting in a chair going, hi, I'm your new best buddy. And and suddenly it's perfectly OK to put Hugh Hewitt on your show. And no matter what the fuck he says. You can you can give him a side eye if you're Joy Reid, but you cannot call him out for his lying bullshit, which pollutes everything, which which tells me how deeply corrupt the entire system is. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for Drift Glass to get the hell off his soapbox. Because uh, we're going to thank uh, one of our listeners, Mark. Mark D. sent me an article, sent you an article, too, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, from firstthings.com, which is published by the Institute on Religion and Public Life. Uh, it is an editorial by a person named Dale Coulter. I don't believe there's any relation to Ann Coulter, but it's spelled the same. Oh, well. uh, the title of the email that uh, Mr. D sent uh, was, I'm an independent. <laughs> and I went and read this article, and oh my gosh. Yeah. It is uh, entitled, Evangelical Identity in the Age of Trump. Yeah. And uh, it's basically trying to, to uh, argue about your vote. You know, you voted, you may have voted for uh, Donald Trump as an evangelical. What does that mean? And it's lifeboat building. The whole article oh, yeah. is just lifeboat building. So, well, let's call it an arc because it's yeah, Bible. It's an arc. Let's call yes. it an arc. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to read one paragraph from this article, uh, which is hilarious, and I hope you guys will enjoy it. After the candidacy of Roy Moore, the trickle of those questioning evangelical identity has become a steady stream. It began with Peter Weiner's concern that the evangelicals now aboard the Trump train have come to embody what once were liberal caricatures. Yeah. For this reason, Weiner says he can no longer self-identify as an evangelical. Oh, no. <laughs> 
though he admits that his beliefs still fit in the movement. I mean, have, can you hear this, folks? Can you hear this? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Tea Party Christian. Right, exactly. Yeah. Citing yeah. Wayner, Tim Keller has suggested that the term has taken a beating, the term evangelical has taken a beating due to false perceptions grounded in reporting on nominal forms of evangelicalism. Sure. You know, it's not the true evangelicals, right? No. It's only no. the nominal, right, okay. Keller concludes that churches that retain an evangelical confessional identity may need to find a different name. <laughs> yeah. I have a few. I know a few. Oh, yeah. After reading Keller's piece, David French recommended. We all know David French, right? Yeah. He, he's a, an apologist. Okay. David and National, French, I believe he's a National Review guy. National right? Review guy. David yeah. French recommended returning to simply, quote unquote, Christian. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> So, what about uh, scriptural originalist? Yeah. Luke what Al? about yeah? What about uh, constitutional scriptural? Yeah. <laughs> I just can't. But it it goes right back to what we have been talking about for almost eight years. Eight yeah. years next week. Yes, it's our eight year anniversary it's next our week. Our eight year anniversary next week. We'll be celebrating. Yep. Uh, that what the lifeboat building? The fact that once you you have committed yourself to belonging to this tribe that rubs shit in their hair. When there are consequences to that, the ability to run away right. is always present. Yes. Um, and you can, uh, you have the help of Fox News, and then you have the help of every other cable news network, because they all rely on advertising, and they will do nothing to shame the voter, because the yep. voters are their customers. Well, that that was the, that's that feedback loop. Yep, it is. Two of them, but they, they operate... As an engine operates, if you, and this is why I've said a million times on this podcast, I realize and I've said it a million times on my blog. If you take out the center, the right will fall yep. because yep. the center is the rehabilitation machine for uh, wing nuts, for the fascist party, for, for the people who have fallen from grace from the right. Uh, they, they, their business model requires that they shove aside intelligent, thoughtful, competent, uh, brilliant, uh, uh, tall, shall we say, liberals. Um, in in and make room at the table for people who've been wrong about everything. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's Bill mm -hmm. Crystal, it's all the usual suspects. They, ha for some reason, that our journalists. I'm talking to you, James Fowles. That journalists out there who wring their hands. Why won't anyone name names? Why won't anyone call it call this out? Well, then my question back to you, James, is you must know somebody who knows exactly why it is impossible for Bill Crystal to be fired. You have to know. Someone out there knows, and and it's it's another open secret. There are all these in, there's this infestation of these horrible Bush regime dead enders, who are now the never Trumpers. Some of them are, and some of them aren't. But none of them should be anywhere near a camera because they're all horrible, awful, depraved, monstrous people. And yet there they are. And that's why you judge um, a business or a machine by what it produces. Not what it says on the door, not what it says in, in the charter, but what it does. What does the main free, uh, mainstream media do? The mainstream media exists to rehabilitate scumbags like Newt Gingrich. That's why it's there. Everything else is dressing. Everything else is just gingerbread. It exists to make sure that a steady supply of Hugh Hewitts are made available to sit in chairs and take positions that everyone who sits around them knows are bullshit. So because that is the that is the purpose that the mainstream media serves, if you take it out, if you break the both sides mold, if you shoot the lifeboats and don't let them get into them, if you if you stop them from doing that, if you find a way to monkey wrench that, the right will collapse because yep. there's no alibi for them to 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 retreat to. There's no place for them to go because the final alibi of every depraved asshole on the right is always the same. It's always both sides do it. And they, they learn this shit from I, I hear it every every couple of days from my Republican friends, no matter how bad, no matter how crackpot, no matter how bullshit the emails are about their conspiracy theories, debunk them. After you debunk them, the immediate response is, well, you know, both sides are just as bad. Take that away from them. They have nothing. They have to fight on their own terms. They have to stand up and say, Donald Trump is a great president and I support him. Or I'm a fucking idiot. They can't say I had no choice because both candidates were so fucking awful. Well, who said that? Well, Chuck Todd said that and David Brooks said that and Michael Gerson said that and David Frum said that and Joe Scarborough said that and pretty much everybody I watch on TV said that. So take out the center and the right will fall. Anyway. 
Shall we? So proceed? my response to this uh, mm-hmm. article was to say. Um, the the question that that this guy writing this uh, wonders aloud is uh, does voting for someone equal a wholesale endorsement of their character and fitness for office? <laughs> uh-huh. Which so that's the question, right? Yeah. Just because you vote for somebody, are you responsible for your vote? And uh, it was it, the the responses that I got. Uh, what I said was um, there's a third alternative to that. One is I have a shock collar around my neck called abortion and I won't vote for a Democrat because the jolt programmed in my, into my brain won't let me. Um, I watch Fox for news, so I believe all liberals are Satan incarnate. Uh, and um, the Democrat Party is for black people and gays, right? right. I mean, right. those are the three. Those are other options. Uh so and I said, what's a vote for anyway? Um, we see you. We see you. Those of you, those evangelicals who voted for Trump. And uh, if you come back at us when Trump goes down with some malarkey, like I'm an independent constitutional conservative. I never liked the tweeting. He's not a Republican. Uh, there's going to be hell to pay because you own this election. Right. Um, and uh, <laughs> there, I got two responses back. Oh, good. One, one of them uh uh, called gay people persons with same-sex attraction disorder. <laughs> okay. And the other one, <laughs> this is this is fabulous. Said, uh, why when you see the word money laundering somewhere, do you assume it equates to organized crime? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And uh, uh, by the way, Hillary's worse. Right, of course she is. You know, because that's where they have to go. So, all and, right. And, uh, and they will they will come back for their redemption. They will come back for their Tea Party hats. They yeah, will yeah, do They absolutely yeah, will yeah, do it. That's, yeah, yeah. But the people you have to stop, the people you have to hurt mm-hmm. um, financially and professionally are the ones who let them get away with it. Yeah, right. They're the, they're the people who have to be really – have to suffer – Badly. You have and, to know and, that... it, and it is true. Fox News gets paid to do this. Yep. Uh, and, and as you told me last night, you know, they have made their bed with Trump. They are in it yep. to the end. Yeah. Uh, they're not going to flip on him until they absolutely can't do anything else. Uh, and, and again, I it'll be interesting to see how they flip because he's going down. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and I think it'll be, uh, it, you know, the, I think they're, they're not beyond calling for sedition and civil war. No, uh, because they've already done that. You know, well, Barack Obama Judge lost Piro the Iraq. Has already done that, right? Judge Barack Obama lost the Iraq War. Everyone right. knows, that. right? And, right. And, and if you get thirty or forty million reprogrammable meat bags, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. all told, that the reason Donald Trump failed is because of a liberal conspiracy and a liberal plot, and yeah. your neighbors yeah. are against you. Yeah, and it's uh, all just projection of. Yeah. Wow, the mainstream media is really obsessed with Donald Trump and how much they hate him. And now let's talk about the Clinton Foundation yeah. and Benghazi and yeah. baby parts and, and you know, forever. Well, that's why uh, we have been waging, you and I, <laughs> our yeah. lonely war on pronouns. War on, war, it's not so lonely this week. No, no, we got a whole bunch of new recruits. You know what? Let's give people some good news. Um, yeah. We have people sending us both sides do it shit, go, rolling all their eyes long. all day Thank long. Thank you. And Thank we you. also... Uh, I, I, when I have time, I'm, I, I do a lot of different things, but I try, this is my priority. Um, I try to get out there as quick as I can to see, you know, what magazine article or what it is. And these days, usually the comment section are full of people saying, fuck you, stop doing this both sides stuff. Right. This is stupid. Right. This is embarrassing. Why are you embarrassing? Why are you doing it? Now, nobody, uh, who writes this stuff ever responds to anybody. Nobody with a blue check mark by their Twitter account ever responds well, they to don't read your they don't have to read your stuff and they don't no, and they i don't, don't, they don't mind that they don't no but the point being there are an awful lot of people out there who figured out this really simple equation which is every time you hear the word both sides unless it's actually true unless it, it involves house painting or some mm-hmm. other sort of demonstrably equivalent thing go over and say why the what the hell is wrong with you you mm-hmm. goddamn well know this is true and There'll be 20, 20 or 30 commenters behind you. And remember, for every one comment, there's 100 others who don't put anything out there who are furious that this lie has lasted this long because it's so obvious that the people who do it are, are absolutely unwilling to expose themselves to anybody who's going to call them out on it ever. This is mm-hmm. why liberals are not allowed on television right. because it right. would take 30 seconds to make Joe Scarborough Chuck Todd cry on camera. And so we're not going to let that happen. But there are plenty of you out there who are very diligently following up on these things. And we believe we have a new recruit to our ranks, a high ranking. Uh, let's give them a two-star general. Let's make them a two-star general. <laughs> uh, 
the redoubtable Joanne Reed. Yeah. Um, a bless who uh, who has a blue check mark next to her name. Yes, she does. <laughs> and uh, I revived. And is allowed is allowed or has taken the liberty uh -huh. to allow her Twitter account to speak for her in ways that she's not allowed to on the air, which is yeah. great. Yeah. And and I revived for the purpose of a post a movement a grassroots movement that I tried to kickstart several months ago called the mm -hmm. Mo Labels movement. Mo Labels, yes. Uh, <laughs> we don't need fewer labels. We need more and more uh -huh. accurate labels. Because people who don't want things labeled are the ones who are selling you poison. Um, and so we are very, very interested in people who accurately say the words Republican politician, Republican cowardice, Republican Congress, Republican president, instead of we and us and the American people and Congress and the system and Washington and the corrupt duopoly. Because every time you hear that, you're listening to someone who's lying to you on purpose yep. for money. So – uh, we, we discovered, quite to our delight, uh, that Miss Joanne Reed responded to Ezra Klein, yep. of all people, who's taken sh some shit from uh, a couple sides. He took a little shit off of Charlie Pierce this week when uh, uh, we we have grown too com uh, uh, complacent. We're not – we have forgotten how terrifying nuclear weapons can be. And Charlie Pierce said, ask anybody over 60, son. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yes. You don't, Ezra, because I'm not sure you shave on a regular basis now. But <laughs> anybody over the age of 40 goddamn well remembers this. And so I don't know who this we is, but I think we are people that you used to hang out with in journal list and who really don't have any memory of that, which is a tragedy in a media mogul. But he, uh, Ezra Klein did say, we have grown too afraid of the consequences of impeachment. You're yeah. too complacent <laughs> about the consequences Bless his heart, and that's the and he runs a well, and, and 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 on one level, yes, what he's saying is true. Sure, that that what and and leaving out the pronoun for a minute, uh, being concerned on a long term future of democracy, concern trolling of we can't willy nilly impeach a president because uh, it creates a norm, it creates disruption. It's better to have a peaceful, uh, you know, transference sure. of power from one president to another. That's what makes America what we are, uh, et cetera. All of which would stand up to scrutiny if the Republicans hadn't impeached Bill Clinton. It, over, and, over and everything would and would stand up to scrutiny if Republicans who all know that Donald Trump is who he is sat on their hands, defended Dev, Devin Nunes mm -hmm. to the DOJ to the head the acting director of the FBI you know mm -hmm. this is this we thought maybe this impromptu meeting that Paul Ryan was having uh, with people from the Justice Department was for them to call him out and say look Nunez can't just obstruct an investigation apparently he uh, can Apparently he can, and and Paul and Ryan Paul, stood up for him and said, Paul "No, Ryan, we're going to let Nunez do whatever he wants." Well, and, even though he said he recused himself, no, he really didn't. Never and mind. And now he's using his position to basically spy on the Mueller uh, investigation, get exactly eternal information, and and you know what he's doing? He's passing it along to Donald Trump, right? Because 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 that's what he his, did. He did that on bullet. purpose. Yeah, because he's his yep. puppet. He's his little sock puppet, and they're all like that. They're yep. all like that. I mean. Right down the line, there's not a single fucking Republican who's worth anything. They're all a fucking waste of skin and carbon. And and they're they're all craven. They're all assholes. They all know it. I swear to God, at least half of them are being blackmailed by something they hacked in the RNC. But they're all, for some reason, so fucking terrified of saying anything out of line that they're, they, they have let this situation go from very, very bad to incomprehensibly awful – and they're all and, and the only thing you ever see on TV are these moon faced giggling apologists who make who make uh what's his name? Boris Epstein. Yeah. You know, yeah. look look, look like William Buckley. <laughs> um just just sort of giggling and saying, well, uh, today it was some asshole saying, well, Donald Trump's not an intellectual. You know, he's not he, he's not linear. He's all he thinks a lot of things. And he's he's not, you know, he's not cerebral, but he's he's smart. And just sitting there, just giggling and staring off into space, counting how many shekels are being dropped into his bank account for taking this fucking job. There's no reason these people should occupy any place in public office anywhere. But there are 60 million reprogrammable meatbags out there who will keep voting them to office because they they believe the lies they're told every day. And so for all you know, our little part of saying, please just correctly identify who's saying what and quit. Uh, to quit attributing to everyone the blame for what the Republican Party is doing and quit, quit taking credit 
for everyone for what the resistance and liberals and Democrats are doing. Just stop it. And Joanne Reed, to her credit, responded to um, Ezra Klein by saying, not we, quote, quote, Republicans, and not fear, indifference, since they're getting what they want out of him, including direct monetary gains for themselves and their estates through the tax code. Bless your heart, Joy Henry. All right. So uh, you want to talk, let's talk about what's really been happening this week <laughs> in terms of policies that have been brought yeah. out. You yeah. want to start with marijuana? Marijuana. Yeah. And 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 the the pushback from Republican senators where marijuana has been legalized or decriminalized and is now employing more people in Colorado than the manufacturing industry. Yep. Well, it is manufacturing. It is man well the marketing the marketing and sales of marijuana is yeah. employing more people. Uh, yes, there is a manufacturing component to yeah. it, but the industry as a whole yeah. is employing more people than manufacturing in the state yeah. of Colorado, is generating much more tax revenue than anything they've ever seen before. And there is no reason why uh, this isn't a state's rights issue. In term and this was what Donald Trump said during the campaign. This was yeah. the part that you made so clear in your post yes. yesterday. Yeah, Donald Trump but, on the campaign trail in front, because the only time he ever talks about policy when he was campaigning was in front of one of his mob of, you know, squealing goons was about marijuana. Yeah, it should be a state's rights issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be it should be left up to the states, you know, and the medical, the medical. I think that's good. Yeah. And it was, you know, one of his long rambling, um, you know, journeys through his rustic opinions about Mexicans and emails. Uh, he stopped along the way to mention marijuana. Yeah, we should, it should be you know, state's rights. The state should decide. Sure, whatever. Because the Democrats had a well-formulated policy, which I think was too tardy and too timid, as they, they often are. But to diffuse the issue, diffuse every issue, because the media are, are cowards and won't hold him accountable for anything when he's on the campaign trail – all Donald Trump ever had to do was say, oh, yeah, me too. Sure, yeah, a pot, yeah, yeah, me too. Whatever Hillary said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know, ditto Marx. Let's move on to the next thing. And so he just said, yeah, healthcare, we're going to have a, a great healthcare system. Don't worry about it. Taxes, we're going to do great on taxes. Oh, yeah, yeah, pot, sure, no problem at all. And that's all he had to say. And it, that's what Jeff Sessions also implied, I believe, when he was under oath. Um, and it turns out they were lying. Just, just fucking lying. Uh, Jeff Sessions has decided that uh, the devil's arugula. Uh, causes uh, which, which in the form of jazz cigarettes, will lead the teenagers to jungle music and interracial dating. And Jeff Sessions ain't gonna Jeff, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions, the last defender of the Confederacy, ain't gonna have that. So, but this is part of the larger rollback everything the scary black guy did because you don't have to think about anything. You don't have to actually think through the consequences of anything. You don't have to actually understand policy. Just keep hitting the fucking undo button on every single thing Barack Obama did because the only people these assholes care about are these 60 million Republican meatbags who cheer and squeal wildly every time a liberal cries over some Barack Obama policy being rolled back. The, the fact that it hurts them, the fact that their their opioid addiction might be ameliorated some uh, somewhat by access to medical marijuana, they don't give a shit. It made a liberal cry, so it must be good. The, the black guy did it, so it must be bad. Okay, and for, don't tell me the 70 percent of the old guys in in Trump's audience haven't been as high as a kite. Of course they have. In the past week since sure. the since the uh, rallies going on. Sure. But this was so, a way to make liberals cry and a way to undo something the yeah. scary Negro did. Yeah. And ha ha, fuck you. We're going to burn it all down. Ha ha. Because we're all old. We're all white. We're all dying. Well, and so also the other thing is die. when this book came out, I mean, this this policy came out yesterday, Thursday, yeah. Wednesday night. That's all that Laura Ingram was talking about. Right. right. Was demon weed and how people were high in New York City <laughs> at the at the New Year's Eve uh, thing in in the um, where the ball dropped. Yes. Times Wherever. Square. Times Square, where it was 11 degrees. Gosh, people are smoking pot outside when it's 11 degrees outside, uh, you know, <laughs> freezing their butts off. And uh, CNN made a joke about it, that you could smell it. And uh, here's somebody who knows how to get high and ha 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 um, at a New Year's Eve party. And and then uh, and this was their distraction sure. for the Barca lounger crowd that wants sure. to sit there and go, oh, my gosh, you know, those liberals, they're such drug users. Never mind that the, your kid in the basement is abusing opi opioids. You no. know, we know. And, and that's a national health crisis, whereas we put black people in prison for pot that. And 
the war on drugs was about war on black people. And this is just uh, now it's now a distraction. It's well, a distraction if, against what, if, if against uh, the the book. Yeah. If you've heard this before, it's because you've heard it before. It's <laughs> it's it's libertine men and scarlet women in ragtime shameless yeah. music that'll grab your yeah. son and your daughter with the arms of a jungle animal instinct. Mass hysteria, <laughs> friends. The idle brains <laughs> devil playground. Oh, well, we got trouble right here yeah. in River City. Yeah. These are the morons who fall for this shit every time. Who who are, whose kids are getting high? Who probably get high themselves. But they don't give a shit because it has nothing to do with anything other than sticking it to the goddamn dirty hippies who've made their life miserable. And All and right. they saw Laura Ingram on the Ingram angle bitching about it, so it must be true. Moving on. I wanted to, to talk for a minute about uh, a downtime that I had this week where uh, I had a really hard day yesterday. Um, just writing about anything was sort of like dragging my feet through tar. And I just wanted it to end, and I was exhausted by it and really needed a break and needed a vacation from it, which I did get by just knitting in bed for a little while. <laughs> uh -huh. um, sometimes you just need to get under the covers, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, but it did occur to me that uh, one, of the thing, one of the ways in which the Trump administration is fighting us is through exhaustion. And through, uh, you know, just just wearing down so that you no longer are interested in keeping track of, uh, you know, the atrocities and you're not you're not paying attention because it's too upsetting. And I, I just want everyone to sort of think about what is in your armor against that. And for some people, it's going to be religion. For some people, it's going to be, uh, you know, having a drink at the end of the day yeah. uh, in moderation. You know, that's going to be what does it for them. Big bag uh, of knit weed. <laughs> Big bag of weed, yeah. knitting, uh, spending time with your kids, or your pets. Yeah. Uh, you know, something that just sort of gives you some space. Yeah, yoga, exercise, meditation. Yoga, right. Yeah. Exercising, exactly. Find that thing. Um, I finally put a post-it note across the top of my screen that says, you know, do all things with joy. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean Joanne Reed, although she's wonderful. But just uh, make sure that I'm focused on uh, approach <laughs> approaching life um, from the standpoint of... Uh, Moving, we're 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 moving this country in the right direction. We, are. we really are. Uh, even though there are times when it does not appear to be so, uh, there is no question that the majority of this country wants this country to move in the right direction. Oh no! And has been awakened. Uh, we I heard a report from someone on Twitter that uh, they have a December birthday, and their driver's license expired, so they had to go in. In you know. Christmas week, they had to go and get their driver's license, right? And the clerk at the driver's license bureau, the first thing this person said to them was, so are you here to register to vote? And she said, no, I'm here because it's my birthday this week and I need a new license. And she, he said, I've been so busy this week with people registering to vote. Uh-huh. And she, it didn't say whether they were a, um, you know, in a state where there's an election coming up, a special election coming up. And they didn't say that. But whatever the reason, people are registering to vote. This Women's March that's going to happen on January 21st, the goal is to register a million women to vote. Uh-huh. Uh, we can flip states. Whole states. A reminder. Whole states. There state. are no red cities in America. Right. There really, really aren't any red cities in America. Major cities. Major major cities, right. Yeah. The largest city in your state, unless you live in Utah, <laughs> and maybe the Dakotas. <laughs> yeah. No, maybe the Dakotas. <clears throat> the largest city in Iowa is a Democratic city. Yeah. The largest city in uh, Tennessee is a Democratic city. The largest city in Alabama is a Democratic city. These, There is no red city in those states so if you get turnout if you have motivation and if you have registration and uh i'm hoping that these some of these states that haven't done it yet are working towards paper ballots and going back to paper ballots uh we think we've defeated the uh election uh, commission yeah um it turns out, though, that they are <laughs> yeah. turning over their uh, charge to DHS right. um, to cross-check. This was amazing. To cross-check voter rolls 
with lists of illegals, with list what they call illegals, the illegal. lists of undocumented sure. immigrants the, who they have thing. on file, right? The whole thing, this whole thing was was cobbled up out of out of thin air because mm-hmm. Donald Trump is a fucking liar, right? Because it because it killed him that he lost the election, the popular vote of the election. So he invented right. out of thin air millions of illegals, all of whom. Crowded illegal. into California, right, right, and all of right. them voted the same way for Hillary Clinton on the same day, and nobody caught any of them. Yeah, and right. rather than having him institutionalized, because yeah. he's obviously out of his yes, fucking mind, right. we're right. going to set up a goddamn commission about it. Right. Well, and also it's an opportunity for us to do more cross-check, to do more of Chris Kobach's crappy, uh, you know, voter suppression. Voter suppression is what it is. And so we're going to take everybody who's named Sanchez, everybody who's renamed Ramirez, everybody who has a slightly Hispanic name that is very common, and we're going to say, look, we've got this undocumented immigrant with a Hispanic sounding name. We're going to cross check that against everybody everywhere that where we have a voter list Mm -hmm. and delete them Mm -hmm. from the voter roll. And uh, it's racist. It's voter suppression. Openly. And because the Democrats on the commission, you know, they they had Democrats on the commission. Right. Who were, <laughs> you know, they won't make that mistake again. Well, Democrats on the commission who sued, sued, sued them, them. sued them, sued said... them to get the records of the commission that they right. were sitting on. I right. mean, this is so blatant. Uh, and one, uh, because they won that, there was no reason to go on with the commission. Uh, and you know, Luke Al, there was a time in this country. Mm-hmm. where a senator would come onto the floor of the Senate with a cane and beat the shit out of another senator. You yeah. know what? I'm not <laughs> it's saying time that's to a... return to the good old days of cane beating. Is that I'm not saying that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm saying that's a thing that we need to think about because if you're sitting on a commission and you're being just screwed sideways every which way and you've gone to all the referees and all the whatever, it's time you start spitting at people's food. It's mm-hmm. time for you to start taking a dump in their desk. It's time for you to start flipping papers over. It's time for you to camp out in front of Chris Kobach's office and mm-hmm. and and with with a protest sign saying Kobach is a fucking Klansman. Chris mm-hmm. Kobach the Klansman. And you can do that if you are a member of the committee and you have access to the building and you have a little pass yeah. and get in. I'm not saying physical harm should ever come to anyone. I'm saying that you have it within your power to humiliate people who desperately need to be humiliated in a way that's camera friendly. So I have a question for you. I'm going to come. I, I want to, first of all, I want to do a shout out to the Pope. Yeah. I don't always do shout outs to the Pope because I don't always think the Catholic Church is doing the right thing every time. Nope. Uh, but World Communications Day is part of the Catholic Church thing. And this year it's on May 13th, the Sunday before Pentecost. Oh. I'm reading this from so, CatholicNews.com. Um, the theme for this year that Pope Francis has come up with is truth in the age of fake news. And he's using the word fake news. Uh, it's very clearly a uh, anti-Donald Trump day. Uh-huh. Uh, he is uh, going to release a statement later this month in January uh, to propose a day um, on the reflection on the causes, the logic, and the consequences of disinformation. Oh, no. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, is that, are they going to march Callista Gingrich through the streets naked? Well, you know that. Their... <laughs> shame, 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 shame. I, they... I'm not saying they should. No, I'm you're not, are very, you? It's very old school. It's very yeah. traditional. <laughs> uh, and it, it, and it, I, I'm, and a, I'm all about kind of modern. Maybe yeah. he's not going to do that. But, I'm all about uh, the traditions. I'm all about the old school. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You know, Callista, if she was going to be marched naked through the streets of, of the Vatican with the shame thing, would probably be holding up a copy of a book and her videos to sell because the ratings are going to be great. And uh, she might as well, you know, take time to pimp her Reagan and, sure. uh, you know, Ronald Reagan, Rendezvous with Destiny video. Right. That's it. Okay. Uh, the other thing is just getting back to this book for a minute, and this is what yeah. I want to ask you about. Yeah. Jake Tapper was on last night reading excerpts from Donald Trump's book <laughs> and saying this is just crazy that he's trying to block, uh, you know, publication of yeah, a, of a book. First of all, he's a publication. Yeah. He's, a, he's a public figure. He can't sue anybody for libel. He can't sue anybody. No. And the whole thing's stupid. But when he discussed the Hope Hicks story, and if you don't know the Hope Hicks story, it has to do with him, uh, with Donald Trump, shaming Hope Hicks in a way. Uh, Hope Hicks expressing concern about Corey Lewandowski because apparently the two of them had dated. Mm-hmm. And Donald Trump says, uh, don't worry, Hope. He, <clears throat> You're the best piece of tail he's ever going to have. Yes. And she runs out of the office because she's ashamed of it, quite 
correctly and she should have quit her job that minute and the fact that she hasn't quit her job at this point why you know shows that uh she's got ulterior motives but sure. uh her family is now very concerned about her mental health from the standpoint of all the abuse she's taken um and uh this is this is Donald Trump continuing in the White House uh sexual misconduct and sexual uh harassment of an employee and uh, the, the thing is about it is that Jake Tapper was repeating this story, and he left Corey Lewandowski's name off of it. Yes, he did, didn't he? Now, who does he work for again? Who does Jake Tapper work for again? Jake Tapper, worker, J- Jake Tapper works for CNN. That's right. Now, That's right. Now, now Corey Lewandowski <laughs> used to work for— or CNN. Does, does, he, does he work for them now? Does he work for them now? It's hard for me to remember. I don't believe so. Because there's a revolving door. He keeps— On contract with he them. He keeps— uh, coming and going from the Trump White House to CNN and back and forth, collecting yeah. checks from both yeah. sides. I thought it was really interesting that Jake Tapper didn't mention former fellow CNN employee name. Former and current uh, and respected. Yeah. Respected yeah. CNN employee. <laughs> Uh, and let's not forget, I'm sorry yeah. for Hope Hicks, really. I, I know that working oh, I am too. Working am too. Yeah. at an abattoir that is the slaughterhouse of democracy might be hard on your nerves. Mm-hmm. Uh, but maybe you shouldn't be working there because they're very, very, very bad people. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe you work for evil men and women. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe you should run like hell away from there and tell people your story. But you're not going to. And since you're not going to, I don't really feel that sorry for you. Mm-hmm. Sorry. You made your bed, and Corey Lewandowski apparently you shared it with you, so have a good time living that down for the rest of your natural life. Uh, one last little bit of breaking news. Um, you know that jackass Josh Mandel, who was a Senate Trump Republican candidate, conservative Republican, trying to... He's he's now the Republican Senate nominee uh, running against Sherrod Brown uh-huh. in 2018. Okay. He just dropped out of the race. Oh, no. Oh, uh, he says it's about his wife's health. Um, some insiders in Ohio are saying, uh, we actually know there's a story coming out about you in the next and your finances <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. So uh, we'll see how that unfolds. Maybe that won't unfold now that he's dropped out of the race. But apparently, uh, yeah, there's uh, he was an early supporter of Donald Trump. And uh, you know what happens to early supporters of Donald Trump? Yeah. They, yeah. they, you won't see him no more. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I, I do want to add one thing about right Roy, Cohn. Roy Cohn. Oh, yeah. We got to talk about Roy Cohn. The Roy Cohn oh comment God. is is horrifying for lots of reasons. Yes. Uh, because Donald Trump was furious, apparently, because Jeff Sessions didn't sign on to be his mob lawyer. Right. And that's what the that's what the attorney general is supposed to do. You know, that's just supposed to be my lawyer. And he wants to know, why, where's my Roy Cohn? But he paired that with Eric Holder because, really, Donald Trump really does believe uh, – his entire psychological makeup is built out of Fox News shitty conspiracy theories. Mm-hmm. And according mm-hmm. to the preeminent Fox News conspiracy theory, the uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, <laughs> co-conspirators, yeah. uh, Barack Hussein Obama and his Negro friends, uh, were running through the government just ripping the place apart, uh, conspiring with each other and looking out for each other's back because they don't give a On shit about On the tarmac. Yeah. On the tarmac, don't you know? And so Eric Holder was hired not because he was good and skilled and knowledgeable and wanted to defend civil rights, but because he was black and he was a friend of Barack Obama. And so mm-hmm. he's got my back because, you know, we're, we're, we're friends from the hood. That's how right. Donald Trump's brain fucking works. He looks at the entire U.S. government and wonders, you know, where – because because now I'm the president. So I get to do anything I want, right? Because Barack Obama got to do anything he wanted. I know because Fox News told me this every goddamn day of my miserable life. So I get to hire whoever the fuck I want, right? And he'll cover my ass just like Eric mm-hmm. Holder did because that's the right. way the government works. Right. And it turns out it doesn't work that way. Now he feels personally insulted because <laughs> – no, no. I get to, I get the big fucking house. I get the right. thing with the carpet. I get the big airplane, and I get to have my own mob lawyer run the government, right? That's how this shit works. And somebody had to tell him, no, that's not actually how the government works. Uh, Without telling him that everything you've been told by Fox News and Roger Ailes, your close personal friend, has been a fucking lie since day one. So he's now personally slighted and personally put out because, well, fuck it. How come I don't get my mob lawyer, too? That's how the brain of Donald Trump works. And Roy Cohen, if you don't know who he is, is just the worst person ever, was disgraced and disbarred. And Donald Trump's personal lawyer. Was Donald Trump's lawyer. So being Roy Cohn and being my personal mob lawyer, uh, well, you know, there is no connection between money laundering and organized crime, Drift Glass. I read it uh-huh. in a comment thread 
over at the religion page. So <laughs> see, see. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of news, and maybe I'll get to it some other time, but uh, um, it's now... Read his blog. Read yeah. his blog. Well, no, I'm, we I are... mean, drunk George Papadopoulos is the best George Papadopoulos. Listen <laughs> to that. <laughs> I want to know what he was drinking. Uh, I'll, bet, I'll bet it was uh, something with a lot of fruit in it and uh, maybe some coffee, because, you know, coffee boy. And this, so. well, and he was also, Jeff Sessions was apparently trying to look up dirt for uh, Trump on Comey. He is a thug. Yep. He's just yep. an absolute yep. scumbag. Yep. And he's the attorney general. This is also a big week. You can do your own research on Republicans threatening to lock up their opponents. Absolutely. And also, let's be clear that um, Jared and Ivanka have a deal. They do. Ivanka gets to run for president first. That's awfully nice. Um also, Donald Trump has his own bed where he can eat cheeseburgers at nighttime and poop. Um, apparently, and and I think that I think leaving I leaving uh, Melania out of this story as much as possible has been the media's kindness to her because they feel sorry for her and having an eleven year old son. Mm -hmm. uh, and having uh, the worst husband in the world, and not that she didn't make her own bed in her own bedroom with a lock it on the door. I know she did, uh, but uh, I think leaving her out of the the salacious details of all of this and the is a kindness, you know, is, is yeah, is a yeah. mercy, and particularly, mercy. Um, you know, the stories about inauguration day. I'm I'm not going to go into it too much, but you could see it on the camera. The camera didn't hide that. And um, he's a he's an abusive asshole. He's a monster. And we, a, we're clear married about to a monster. that. We know how he treats women. Yeah. And um, you know, that's yeah. Uh, I, I hope I hope she gets out of that and gets her own life back at some point. I really do. Three quick reminders. Puerto Rico still a disaster because the Trump yep. administration are criminally incompetent and chip children and the dreamers are still being held hostage by the Republican party. Cause by the Republican cause party. They're, they're evil men. They're evil men mm -hmm. who do evil yep. things. And yep. if you follow them, then you, there's something fundamentally metaphysically wrong with you personally. Yep. You, you're the problem. Personally, you, you're the problem. Thank you. But that's not our listeners. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an internet kitty sent in by you, the listeners. But this week, we're going to set aside time for Drift Glass. This is your mother's kitty. Yes, it's Miss Odessa. Miss Odessa. Uh, who, who took a long journey across the country, over many mountains, across great deserts. Uh, was a perfect princess the entire time. Is now queen of the castle, far out west where my mom now lives with my sister. Uh, more or less on the same grounds. Um, and Miss Odessa this year has finally deigned to go back into her carrying case. Yes, uh, her so. li her little hidey hole in in the in the beautiful little padded house. Um, she wouldn't go in it for a year because no. <laughs> she no. didn't want to be back in the car. I think. <laughs> but hey, mom, hey Odessa, love yeah, you. Yeah, she here. now she now feels like she's at home. So and she's not going anywhere. So she went back in her little house this week. And uh, we love Odessa. She's a fluffy, sweet, sweet, sweet cat. Uh, you can go see Odessa at our Facebook page and website. And you can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Mm -hmm. uh, I did want to say, uh, those of you that have never given to the podcast, uh, this is the perfect month to send us $8. It's our 8th anniversary episode next week. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can get into a new habit of supporting liberal media. Just send us eight bucks. We do not keep a mailing list. We do not sell a mailing nope. list. We do not. Uh, we will send you a thank you yep. for your donation, mm -hmm. uh, which you can send on PayPal. You can send by check. You can send by uh, Patreon. Um, but however you send it, know that you're kind of uh, changing your gears in the new year. And uh, that's a good thing to do. Yes. And eight bucks is a good donation. That's more than we usually get. We usually get five buck donations. That's a that's the average the uh I forget what the mathematical term is. Most of the donations that come in are five bucks. And uh sometimes we get more, but most of the the count of donations that we get is five bucks and we live on that. So uh eight bucks would be a generous donation and uh it makes a difference to us and it'll make a difference in how you feel about how wonderful a person you already are. So thank you. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details, our PayPal postal address, 
and Patreon information is all there at ProLeftPod.com. We also have our GoFundMe still up because we heard from a couple of listeners who have donated since we reached our goal um, of paying off the furnace and air conditioning. Thank you very much. Uh, that uh, I had made a comment about, you know, we still have middle child's braces to pay for. Um, we still have the washer dryer to pay for because someone wrote to us and said, look, this is the easiest way I'm on Go fund me myself, and it's the easiest way for me to donate. Uh, please leave that open so I can do that. And they did. They donated uh, to the podcast that way. So we upped our goal to include middle child's braces and the washer dryer because I really want um, – it, it's also important to some donors that they know that they're giving to something concrete. So uh, to know that, I wanted them to know that. So thank you. Uh, that's still open. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Go Blue Gal, for their winter reading, the Internet Kitties have pre-ordered the George R. R. Martin Michael Wolf crossover novel, Songs of Ice and Fire and Fury. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, loving, loving. Let's forget about the wine and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow and the switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Act Podcast is recorded under Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.